when the war's over, we honor bravery. But look at all those brave people. Look at the medals that guy has on his chest, or the woman has on her chest. And sacrifice. Cemeteries and so on. We commend leadership and duty and we all these sports and all these other things. You know, battlefields. Who's the markers of war? Battlefields, reunions, cemeteries, and memorials. Reunions are often at the place where the where it happened, like D-Day was the uh, reunion, and it happened, that's where the troops came in. There wasn't anything there left in the buildings, but that was the location where it happened. So often the, the, the reunion will occur in, in the physical place where people bring back their memories about the places. So those are the things, tourism markers of war. As I mentioned before, the people that generated the uh, 50th anniversary of D-Day said that was the fifth, it was the biggest tourist event ever. Now they claim it was anyhow. Ethnic cleansing. That's an open part of it. We don't think of it. We don't think of ethnic cleansing much. I mean, if we ignore countries that are involved in ethnic cleansing now, generally. But there are some exceptions. Holocaust Museum, some things that do, we do remember these things. Because there's a lot going on now in the world. <coughs> ethnic cleansing. Okay? The tourism market, places like that, important. They're not going to be in the exam, but the idea, I wanted you to know that there are places that they do have tourism market, tourism places. People, you know, they're tourism attractions. The idea is the idea of a uh, killings or events like this, terrorism events, don't last very long. As long as they don't continue. If they continue, then people remember them. But often if there's a tragedy, uh, it's terrible for the people that are killed, but the impact is temporary for that, unless it, they occur and reoccur. But the point is, for acts of terrorism, they don't last, they don't last for a long time. The uh, impact, and, excuse me, an act of terrorism is going to be impact on, ter on tourism visitation, but that, that doesn't last very long and it picks back up. We were learning this. Uh, terrorism was a terrible thing with tourism because of the economic aspects of it. Well, you know, so it's a lot more than the money aspect of it. Very important is the uh, there's the uh, people that are killed. The emotional aspect of it. In any event, people that write about it talk about the economic impacts of it because of tourism. Now repeated within six weeks. That six, you know, eight weeks, ten weeks. Longer, but it's a small period of time. Uh, the tourism is back to normal, and the tourist sites are not showing tourist sites. Yeah, Sometimes they are, but like the 9/11 is going to be a, a famous site for tourism. The 9/11 site. Natural disasters. Well, the point is they have real impact where it happens. You can see a natural disaster going on in New York City right now. It's really bad for the floodwaters where Sandy got to the buildings. You know, it's going to cost billions of dollars worth of damage to, to those. But far beyond it, it's not much, not much damage. And uh, tourism can recover quickly, often if they clean it up. It has to be cleaned up, but then tourism can go back. Go back. Uh, this thing you read here is a revived because a one in a thousand year event will be quickly forgotten. And I, should just, I just cut this out of the stuff. That's true because a one in one thousand year event will be quickly forgotten. But with global climate change and sea level rise, how many more times is New York City going to get hit with Hurricane Sandy's? It's going to be more than one in a thousand years with, uh, with sea level rise and increasing intensity of hurricanes. So it could be that the hurricane, you know, constantly coming into an area would affect tourism to that area. Like, especially during the hurricane season. People just won't go there 
because they think a hurricane might come in. <coughs> Another topic we talked about, completely different, peace through tourism. Peace, absence of war is necessary for tourism to happen. Does tourism enhance world peace? Well, a lot of people hoped it would. Tourism is a cultural ambassador. People get to know other people from other countries. <coughs> Opportunity to share ideas. Uh, research on that. Political perspective, tourism is a broader of national integration, international understanding, and goodwill. And yeah, that was the hope. That's the, the theory. Peace is a big deal for tourism. One of the interesting things is that I'll talk about that in a minute, about the research done <clears throat> for individuals, often that's not the case. In other words, the individual might come back with a poorer feeling of the country. Some of them, some of the tourists. But the, uh, there's another aspect of it is the country to country, business to business interreaction. It could be a big uh, generator of, of wanting to get cooperative with other countries. So it could very well be that, uh, that tourism, the money it can bring in, would be a uh, instigator of peace. I wish that were the case like in Iran. Wouldn't it be nice if the Iranians were very anxious to get the tourist trade back again and that would, you know, they'd stop enriching uranium or whatever and they would reach out to uh, to get more people and stop any kind of <coughs> problem with, uh, with, with war and tragedy. So tourism could be used as a tool for that, but it could be looked at it from a different point of view. In other words, instead of a person to person, you look at it from a big perspective. Hope that tourism would be the world's first big or the world's big peace industry. That's what people hope. The research shows excuse me. Research shows of increased conflict between the tourists and the people visiting. That's the research that was done. Two schools of thought optimist hope is going to work. Pessimists think fewer contacts with the locals, and some of those contacts are negative. Okay? And so there's two schools of thought in regard to peace through tourism. Okay? Anybody know those things? You should know that there's two concepts of it. And you should also know that there's might have a poorer feeling of it, but the governments might have a positive feeling of it because of the economics of it. It's more than just the economics, it's the uh, international relations, it's the pride, it's the uh, respect of each other. And there might be an aspect of that that people want to use tourist people to come, invite them in all the time, and that, so therefore they want to peace with the other country, so it could be that uh, tourism is a generator of world peace because of the business and government interaction. And, you know, don't, don't bet everything on the tourists that come back with a poor appeal. Okay? Volunteer tourism. What is it? Well, different definitions, all kinds of definitions. Utilizing discretionary time and income. One where you usually go and help people, help people in need. That's volunteer tourism. Those tourists who go on vacation engage in alleviating poverty, those are the biggest things. We'll talk about that. There's a few reasons, different, different people have different criteria for what are the most important things. Alleviating poverty, restoring the natural environment, Delivering medical services, that's a big deal. And research. A lot of you didn't know about that, or I didn't know about that. If you knew about it all the time. But there's an awful lot of research being done. People would act as well as, you can call the tourists. They just go there for a short time. Go to a different country for a short time and uh, do research. <coughs> the volunteer tourism, limiting poverty, restoring the nature, natural environment, medical services, and research. Who are volunteer tourists? They launch themselves on a 